What's up guys? Today I'm going to teach you how to get this $2,800 coffee table for less than $300. In fact, I'm sitting on it, I made it, and I'm going to show you exactly what to do. Hey there, my name is Whitney Hansen. I am the other half of Unsophisticated DIY. Let me be real, I'm a little bit bougie. I love expensive furniture, but I just don't have it in my budget. So anytime I see an item or a piece of furniture that is gorgeous and I think I can recreate, I am all about that. Coffee table format and plan was not my own idea. I saw a, a gal on Instagram, it was pennies to fortune. Pennies to fortune? It's gonna be linked in the comments box. She did this exact uh, coffee table and I fell in love with it. So when I saw that, I knew I immediately had to make one for my own house. So I am following a lot of her template as well. So definitely go give her some love on Instagram, but making it my own, of course. So let's go ahead and dive into what you're going to need for this coffee table project. Okay, so these are all of the materials that you're going to need. You need the rounds. I chose to use one inch by three foot circle ones. I got these from Home Depot and they were a total of $84 for both. A little bit on the spendy side, I know, but that was about the cheapest option I can I could find. I also ordered my half inch wooden dowels. They were 36 inches long off of Amazon. And so do keep in mind that all of these materials are gonna be linked in the comments box below. So I'm not gonna spend a ton of time going through this because take a screenshot and you can just figure out exactly from this list. This can be your shopping list. So let's go ahead and dive into the process of how to build. It takes seven steps. And so we're going to go ahead and dive in. So the first thing you need to do is determine the height of your coffee table. Everything is going to be based off of this. So make sure you put some thought into it. Generally speaking, you don't want your coffee table to be higher than your couch cushions. So for me, this was a total of 17 and a half inches for my couch cushion. And I ended up making my coffee table just shy of 17 inches. So this is so important because you don't want it to be an awkward height and you wanna make sure that it's comfortable. So kick your feet up, pretend like you're building it and see if that height feels right for you. Next, you're going to make a brace for your coffee table top and bottom. What you do is take the, your two by four board and you're gonna cut it down to your dimension. So my co entire coffee table is 17 inches tall, but I only wanted the boards to be 15 inches cut. Now keep in mind, each of the, the top and the bottom panels are each one inch. So I took 17 minus two inches to account for the, the depth of the top and bottom rounds and cut my boards at 15 inches. Then I used some deck screws that were about three inches long and attached all of my boards together. It was a pretty simple frame. It didn't really, I mean, it, there's nothing really too much to it. So don't put too much thought into it. Just make sure you get your height correct because that's what's going to be the entire height of your coffee table. So spend a little bit of time on that part. But other than that, it's pretty easy. Next, you're going to use those metal brackets that you picked up from the roofing section and you're going to attach one to the top of each side and then one to the bottom of each. So you're gonna have a total of four brackets per frame support per box. And that is what you're going to screw into the top of the coffee table, the round and the bottom of the coffee table round. So you're just gonna attach the top and bottom with these metal brackets. Now you are ready to measure your dowel length. So you're going to take a tape measure and measure from the base to the top. It's really, really difficult to get the right length. So this might take a couple extra dowels to practice, but make sure you do that. And I'm going to give you one of the biggest pro tips in the entire world. Get yourself one of these tape measures that have the call outs. It makes it so much easier to measure and a lot less of your mis mistakes. So this is the exact tape measure I use. It's going to be linked in the comments box below. So definitely add it to your Amazon cart like immediately. It's game changing. Now you're ready to cut your dowels. I highly recommend doing three to four dowels at a time and not doing more than that. Boards aren't perfect, so the sizes are likely going to change. They did for sure with mine. So what I do is I cut it on a chop saw and I flip it over and then make another cut as well. One pro tip, go watch the video in the comments box below where I show you how to create a makeshift stopper for repetitive cuts. It's gonna save you so much time and energy. And honestly, it's not difficult, but there is a step and a system to that. So go check out that video. Now this was my least favorite step out of the entire process because it was so redundant, repetitive, and just very time consuming. But you have to attach those wooden dowels with wood glue. I used tight blonde wood glue and it worked out really well. I would also occasionally check with that orange carpenter square just to make sure that everything was straight and a 90 degree angle, which is exactly what I wanted. So just do a little bit at a time and you have to be patient with this process. It takes 
so long. It really, really does. The other piece too, to keep in mind is that as you're going along, sometimes you're going to have pieces that don't seem to fit. Maybe you cut them a little bit too short or they're too tall. You're always going to be making adjustments throughout this entire process. So please be aware of that. Here's a pro tip that I found that worked really well very lightly tap, tap, tap and get it into place. It's going to make it secure and it's actually going to stay a little bit better. So definitely give that a shot. I found that to be super, super useful. Um, just be careful. You don't hit that dowel too much or you're going to knock some of your others out of place too, but it worked out really well. I was pretty happy with it. Now, next, if you've never worked with wood glue, this is important to know as well. Anything that touches the wood does not absorb stain. So any wood glue drippings or anything that you get on, on the dowels or the tops, you want to make sure you wipe off as much as you possibly can so that it doesn't look tacky when you go to stain. The reason we picked up that little thing of deck stain or the solid color stain is for those touch-ups. When you go to touch up the wood glue, you have to have a solid stain color or it just won't look very good. So that's the reason why we are picking up the solid stain. So I hope that makes sense. So while that wood glue is drying, the best thing to do is to test out a couple of your stains on the inside. So I tried a color called Early American by Minwax, and I also tried one that was called Driftwood, also by Minwax. Notice I just have the little sample sizes. This is plenty for this project. That's why you only need the sample size for $5. So just take a, a paper towel or a rag or whatever the heck you have available and dab a little bit on the dowel and the tabletop to see the colors. Let it dry for a good 24 hours before you choose exactly what color. It takes some time for that stain to penetrate. Now here was the problem. The last dowel did not quite fit. It was a little bit off. My measurements were a little screwy, so it wasn't a good fit. What I had to do is I actually had to go to the store and buy a quarter inch dowel instead of the half inch. What that did is it allowed it to fit, but I bought three different size dowels to try to make this work. And honestly, it looked a little funky in the moment, but you can't even tell now. Now, after a solid 24 hours, once your wood glue has completely dried and everything is secure, you're ready to start with the fun part. You need to condition the wood, and that's the pre-wood conditioner we're using. Anytime you're using a soft wood like a poplar or pine, you want to make sure you do this because it's going to allow the stain to penetrate a little bit more evenly. It's not perfect, but it does a better job. So I just used a foam brush and applied my small wood conditioner to all of the fluting and the top of the dowel. I didn't worry about the bottom. I'm not going to lie. No one's going to see that. So I didn't spend the time to stain and condition the bottom piece because again, no one's going to see it. So I didn't bother wasting my time, but that's what you're going to do. Go through the entire process and make sure that wood is conditioned, baby. Next, I applied my stain. I chose to go with Early American by Minwax. I really like the way it looked and it actually matches one of my pieces of furniture in my living room currently. So I gave that a nice little shake and then of course opened the stain and started the application process. I initially used a paper towel for the top of the round just to make sure I got the right amount. I had to do two coats on the top and then I moved on to the fluting. I started with a paper towel and honestly what I found is it was kind of a pain in the butt. When I switched to a foam brush for the fluting on the side, it made it so much easier. I got into all the cracks and it started to just go a lot faster. So that is what I would recommend is using a foam brush for the fluting specifically, but a paper towel with some stain on the top. I thought that worked out really, really well. Do keep in mind that any of the exposed sides, like on the sides of the rounds, it will absorb the stain potentially a little bit darker. So just keep that in the back of your mind. And if you don't want it to be super dark, do a very light coating on the edges of the rounds. Okay, now let that stain dry for at least 24 hours and you are officially ready to move on to the last coat, which is the polycrylic coat. This is your protectant coat, so it's really important that you do not skip this step. This is gonna prevent your table from getting water stains. It's gonna really make it easier to clean, so it's a super, super important step to take. Now to apply a polyacrylic coat, if you've never used this, it goes on kind of cloudy, milky white. That is so normal. So just go ahead and dip your foam brush in there and then you're going to start to just paint it on essentially. Try to go in longer strokes if possible so that you don't get a ton of weird uh, stroke marks. It, it can happen and if it does, that's totally fine. But do one solid coat of this, including the fluting. If you can, do a light coat on the fluting and then let that dry completely. Once it's dry, you're gonna lightly sand with 220 grit sandpaper and then do a second coat of the polycrylic. 
Now I stopped after two coats. For me, that was plenty, but you can do three, four. I wouldn't do really more than four, but it's going to give you a nice shine and it's also going to protect your coffee table. I chose to use a clear satin. I don't want a super shiny finish, so that's the color that I chose to do. After letting that dry for 24 hours, I brought it into my house and here is the finished product. I'm obsessed with it. What do you think? So here's my thoughts. You can either pay $2,800 to get a coffee table that looks like this, or you can put a little bit of elbow grease and about 10 hours worth of work in and get this beautiful product for $212. Not a bad price point. If you ask me, definitely worth the amount of energy and work it took. However, I'm not making another one. It was a pain in the butt if I'm being really honest. <laughs> If you choose to make this, make sure you tag me in Instagram. I'm at unsophisticated underscore DIY and show me your projects. I'd love to see how your coffee table turned out. And more than anything, I hope you like experiment and try some new things and see what you can do with this project. It's a ton of fun, very time consuming, but it is very doable as I have proven. If I can do it, literally anybody can do it. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and we will see you for another unsophisticated DIY in the near future. Bye.